Listening Fanfiction presents Pesticide by Mara Marath. Based off the manga series I Shield 21. Narrated for you by Sierra Fees. It was a general consensus that Kobayakawa Sena was very attractive. Those messy brown locks, soft and sticking up every which way like duck fluff waiting for fingers to run through them. And maybe yank them just so Sena's reaction could be revealed to the world. Those large brown no eyes glistening with innocence and curiosity and naivete often watering, which up to the cuteness factor by 10, that slim, delicate build, so slight that one felt as if they could just fold Senta into his arms and maybe lock him away forever so he wouldn't get tainted by the idiocy of everyone else around him. And those legs. Dear gods, those legs! Years of running had conditioned them to be perfectly lean, 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 beautifully shaped. Not bulky enough to be a turn off, but not as scarty as chicken's legs either. Men and women too practically drooled when they saw Senna stretching his legs. Golden legs, not just in terms of speed, which only served to make them more attractive, but in terms of what would it be like to have those gorgeous things wrapped up on me while he screamed my... <clears throat> the point of this is... Koya Kawasena was attractive, really attractive. His most attractive features were his eyes, his hair, his face, his body shape, and his legs, which, now that Hiroma Yoichi thought about it, basically meant everything. But that was okay, because it only reinforced the fact that Kobaya Kawasena was the most unnormal thing on Earth. Although most of the commentary from above was kind of tainted by Hiruma's own slightly twisted tastes, it didn't change the facts. Facts were facts were facts, and it was an undeniable fact that Senna's legs, and his hair, and his eyes, and his face, and his body, and the rest of him. Ahem. The real point of this is, Senna's attractiveness did not go unnoticed. In fact, although Hiruma was loath to admit it, he would have been mad at all the idiocy in the world if Senna's attractiveness had gone unnoticed. It was okay at the beginning, when the admirers were limited to just that, admirers. Fangirls and, alright, fanboys, who kind of followed Senna around, giggling if he stopped and turned around to look at them. Girls and guys who stopped and turned around to look at him as he walked down the street. Cashiers who blushed and started stuttering when faced with Senna's shyly adorable, Excuse me, how much is this? Hiruma shot that cashier later. Anyway, the stuttering increased the amount of time Senna had to spend with the awkward boy by five minutes, meaning that Hiruma got his gum five minutes late. And you were not late with Hiruma's gum. You just weren't. The fact that Senna had to spend an inordinate amount of time with another guy who was checking him out may or may not have also been a contributing factor to Hiruma's wrath. Then they started getting bolder. It all started when one of the louder fangirls walked up to Senna one Valentine's Day and stuffed her chocolate in his hands, declaring her love for him. Senna had been shocked, which was unsurprising, because the kid was the densest person Aruma had ever met. But he had accepted the chocolate gracefully, while explaining as kindly as he could through his shock that he didn't have any interest in a relationship at the moment. It had been nice of him. And that was when it all started going downhill. As soon as his admirers realized that Senna wasn't a harsh person and wouldn't reject anyone cruelly, in fact would try to accept their affections for him, chocolate and all, they started going all out. In droves. Moms, as a matter of fact. The first few days were the worst. Senna literally couldn't step outside without at least five people jumping out of the bushes to declare their love. Then, after Senna was late to practice four days in a row, Hiruma decided that enough was enough. It was time for pest control. So he promptly sent out an announcement that anyone who wasted the brunette's time would have all their secrets revealed to the entire school through the intercom system. And that cut the number of confessions down to a few idiots. The idiot's secrets were promptly revealed to the entire school through the intercom system. The idiots were eliminated. Phase 1 of pest control complete. 
threw my headset back and relaxed then, letting Senna's mutters of, How could you do that? And why does it even matter to use? And that was too cruel, Uruma sans wash over him. The crisis was over. Now the pipsqueak could go back to coming to practice on time and improving his running, and there would be no chance of him losing focus because of a lover. Hiram should have known it was too good to last. The next shock came when someone from another school walked over and confessed to Sina. Hatsujo Kaoru. Some lame of a football player who the Daemon team had apparently played against in their first match of the season. Hiruma had all but forgotten him by now. He wasn't even significant enough to earn more than half a page in Hiruma's black book. He was a crappy football player, he had a crappy personality, and he was obsessed with girls. So what was he doing confessing to the pipsqueak? Senna took the confession like he had taken all the previous ones. With blushing grace. No, thank you. I'm not interested, Hatsujo-san. Oh, come on, Senna chan Just one day, Hatsujo froze at the sound of a gun being got. <laughs> when the pimp squeak says he's not interested, he means he isn't interested. Hiruma said through his biggest grin, the one that showed off all of his pointy teeth. So why don't you just leave, loser? Sweating and shaking, Hatsujo left. And Hiruma was treated to another round of mutterds. You don't have to be so means, and I can take care of this kind of thing myself. From Sena. He didn't hear a word of it. The only thing he was thinking was, if a football player they had played at the beginning of the season was interested in Sena, who else might be? As it turned out, the answer was a whole lot of people. Next came Roy. Habashira Roy. The chameleon wannabe gangster. He caught Senna alone in an alley. Hiruma just happened to be following him. It was a coincidence, okay? A coincidence! And proceeded to stumble out and offer for a date. Hiruma! Why was this idiot so wimpy? Motorcycle gangster is butt. Senna turned him down. I- I'm sorry. I just, just don't like you that way. Sorry, please don't hurt me. And he ran. That happened with a bunch of other minor players too, and Hiruma, he wasn't relieved, decided that there was nothing to worry about. And then came the big guns. The first batter was Sakuraba Haruto. There was a bright spot of pink on the receiver's cheeks that made Hiruma want to puke. Hey, Sada! Who gave him permission to call the pipsqueak by his first name? I was wondering if... He gulped and swallowed. Beads of sweat appeared on his forehead. If you'd want to... BIM SQUEAK! Hiruma didn't even know he had shouted until Santa jumped five feet into the air. (laughs) Hiruma-san? If you're late for practice, I'll send Summerus on you! I'm going, I'm going! Sorry, Sakuraba-san. Talk to you later. And with that, Santa was off. Leaving Sakuraba looking very dejected. Hiruma waited until his favorite best and only running back was out of sight until he stomped up to Sakuraba, grinning like a madman. K-k-k, listen up, pansy, he said through his grin, bringing out his black book. If you lay another hand on my running back, if you even think about scoring with that pipsqueak, every single thing I have on you will be sending your fangirls. Including that shot I got of you in that locker room three weeks ago. Cut it! Sakuraba's face was the picture of horror. You wouldn't! Hiruma's grin. Why didn't? You wanna try me? When Sakuraba rapidly shook his head, he pocketed the book and started to walk away. And then he paused. Oh yeah, you can tell that to all of your little forest friends too. The pimpsqueak belongs to Damon and no one else. Get that pansy? Senna was very, very disturbed when Aroma showed up to practice whistling through his gum. 
The rumor that Hiruma Yoichi would destroy anyone who walked within 10 feet of Senna or so much as looked at him the wrong way was spread very, very quickly. Phase 2 of pest control. Complete. This time, though, Hiruma didn't let himself relax because he had learned the basic rule of pest control. What didn't kill a bug made it stronger. And the ones who kept going, despite the pesticides, were the ones who were going to spawn more and more and more. They were the ones that were going to be the hardest to kill. And he already had some suspicions as to who the toughest bugs were going to be. He was right. Maruko Reiji. He was supposed to be some sort of playboy who secretly harbored, or rather openly flaunted, feelings for his team manager, which didn't explain why he not so suddenly began trying to catch Senna on the weekends, springing requests for dates on the brunette at random moments, no matter how many times he was turned down. No threat from Iruma. Not even when he actually carried out the threat. The Hakushu dinosaurs would never be able to look at their captain the same way ever again could deter him, but Hiruma refused to take this as evidence of the quarterback's good character and more as evidence of his stubbornness. He was like a cockroach that just wouldn't die. Akaba Hayato, tight end of the bando spiders, supposedly intelligent and obsessed with music. Somehow he became obsessed with Senna instead, showing up to serenade the brunette on the guitar at night or to watch him during training, supposedly to see if the brunette had and his speed. His musical references were idiotic, and Senna was obviously weirded out by them too. But at least he never outright tried to ask Senna out. Yet Aruma couldn't decide if it was better or worse to have the red-haired music freak hanging around all the time. Definitely worse, he thought with a scowl as he watched the freak pepper Senna with questions about his running style while steadily inching closer and closer and closer. <gasps> oh! No! The blonde raised his rifle with an evil gaggle. Kakei Shun. The guy had always been obsessed with Ice Shield 21, to the point where the only question was which Ice Shield the giant would go after, east or west. Now, though, the answer was very clearly Senna. He was also smart enough not to admit his feelings at them. He simply hovered over Senna like a mother. Except mothers, as far as Hiruma knew. He didn't shoot their son's deep looks of longing when their sons weren't looking. Just thinking about it made Hiruma sick to his stomach. Panther Spencer. The American was texting and emailing Senna constantly. Constantly. As in, on an hourly basis on weekdays and every five minutes on weekends. His Japanese was horrible, which was why he often mangled phrases like, I love you. And they turned into things like, big help. And which, as far as Hiruma knew, was the only reason why Senna was still oblivious to Panther's feelings. The brunette was overjoyed that his foreign rival had deemed him worthy enough to stay in contact with and replied to all the messages with fervor until Hiruma had Severus chew up his cell phone. One of Senna's admirers, and when Hiruma found out who he or she was dead meat, sent him another one. Congo Agon, the biggest womanizer Hiruma had ever met. As far as Hiruma knew, the man would chase and catch anything at a skirt. Apparently, this extended to Senna too, despite the fact that the devil bat cheerleader uniform was a one-time thing and meant for Daemon's eyes only, not teams from other skulls. That didn't stop the photos from circulating faster than Hiruma could catch up with them. Agan was also on par with Hiruma in terms of cruelty and inhumanity, which was why he drove Hiruma up the wall normally. When he started making his moves on Senna, then popping up in the middle of the brunette's runs to try and drag him into a nearby alley, or offering to massage his legs, throwing him over her shoulder for some joint practice with the Shinryuji Nagas, Hiruma was seething mad! Kaitani Riku, the so-called big brother. Hiruma stopped at the hypocrisy. If Riku really thought of Senna as a little brother, Hiruma would eat Severus's collar. The Seibu wild gunman came to practice every so often to check his childhood friend. The joy on Senna's face and the answering warmth in Riku's whenever they saw each other made Hiruma want to puke. Even more disgusting were the blushes on Riku's face whenever Senna complimented him admiringly or started chattering away about their time together in elementary school. 
And worst of all, Hiroma couldn't even hit him because the white haired kid actually had a legitimate reason to visit Senna. And Hiroma had no doubt that if he did anything to Riku, Senna would flat out quit the Damon football team. Forever! Shin Seijuro, one of the biggest problems on Hiruma's list. He was a robot that thought about nothing but football, training, and nutrition. At least that was how it was supposed to go. Instead, the linebacker's mental focus had shifted to football, training, nutrition, and Senna. If their rivalry had been pure competition before, the match against America had shifted it to an awkward friendship. Awkward because Senna wasn't sure how to act around someone he considered an amazing player, and because Shin was a socially retarded moron, and then at least had Shin side it into love. Love. Nah. The black haired boy's affections were silent but steadfast, and they pissed Aroma off. Yamatu Takeru. The other one of the biggest problems on Hiruma's list. Like Shin, he was a robot, but rather than being robotically socially disinclined, he was a perfect robot. As in, perfect in everything. Hiruma couldn't find a single scrap of blackmail on this guy except for his defeat at Daemon's hands at the Christmas Bowl, and that wouldn't help because it was already public knowledge. The guy had good looks, smarts, a good body, athletic ability, and fangirls. Fangirls! Which pissed Hiroma off even more because, in his opinion, the running back should have just gone after one of the fangirls because that was all that he deserved. He had no right marching in from Gansai and beaming his stupid mouthwash commercial worthy smile at Sina, putting his hand on Senna's shoulder, leaning over to. What? Wasn't that a bit extreme, Hiroma said? He'll survive! He rumor shrugged, blowing the smoke off his rifle. Come on! Senna flailed, looking forward. Y you shot him in the arm! I'm paying his medical fees! What's the big deal? You can't just shoot people like that, Hiruma san! It's what I want to say, but if I said that, I'd be killed. Senna thought, gulping audibly. Hiruma simply smirked. Making pesticide was hard work, but no one had ever called Hiruma a wimp. He'd take care of the bugs around Senna, and then they'd see who came up on top. Like he told Sakuraba, Senna belonged to Damon and Damon alone. Oi, Senna, get over here and help me stretch, will you? No one noticed the twitch developing in Hiruma's eye as Senna hurried over to Jumonji, completely oblivious to the gentle smile the other boy was giving him. No one noticed Hiruma cocking his rifle either. BANG! <coughs> what the heck, Hiruma? Scratch that. Senna belonged to Hiruma and Hiruma alone. It was time to employ in-house pest control. End of Pesticide by Marmoroth. If you enjoyed this recording or the content, feel free to leave a comment below or review the original story from the link in the descriptions. Thank you for listening.